Are you planning to make an off-grid solar system but worried about the energy demands of your fridge? One of the most common questions I get is about refrigerators. How much power do they really use? In this video I will tell you all about fridge power consumption, using my own as a case study and example. I will tell you how many batteries and solar panels you need to run this fridge. Before diving into the details, let's get familiar with a few key terms to help us understand how much power a fridge consumes. First up is rated power. This figure, measured in watts, tells us how much power your fridge uses when running. You can usually find this number on a sticker, inside or outside your fridge. My fridge has a rated power of 75 watts, and we will use this information to figure out its daily energy usage. Next we have the duty cycle. This term might sound technical, but it simply refers to how often your fridge runs throughout the day. It's not always on. It cycles on and off to maintain the internal temperature. By looking at the energy monitor readings for my fridge, we can see that it only draws power during certain periods, specifically when the compressor kicks in. In my book on off-grid solar, I've mentioned that a typical fridge has a duty cycle of about 30%. We will check my fridge readings to see if that holds true. Lastly, let's talk about daily energy usage. This is where we bring it all together. By combining the rated power with a duty cycle, we can calculate how much energy the fridge uses daily. A fridge with a 100 watt rating and a duty cycle of 30% uses about 720 watt hours daily. Stay tuned as we will apply these concepts to determine exactly how much power my fridge uses and how you can repeat the same calculation for yours. In this example, we're focusing on the power consumption of a medium-sized apartment fridge, equipped with a freezer section. The fridge is rated at 75 watts and is about 10 years old. To obtain accurate data, a power consumption monitor was employed for a week in an environment maintained at a steady 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. The results from the monitoring reveal that the fridge consumes approximately 600 watt hours or 0.6 kilowatt hours daily. This figure represents the maximum daily energy usage observed during the analysis period of one week. The manufacturer states that the fridge consumes 182 kilowatt hours per year. If we divide this by the number of days in a year, we get a daily consumption of 500 watt hours or 0.5 kilowatt hours. This is slightly less than our practical test results. To determine the energy consumption of your own fridge, you can multiply its annual consumption by 120%. This is 1.2 times the daily consumption. We apply a straightforward calculation for a duty cycle to understand how often the fridge operates within a 24 hour cycle. By dividing the daily energy consumption, which is 600 watt hours, by the rated power of 75 watts, we find that the fridge runs for a total of 8 hours a day. Consequently, the duty cycle is determined to be approximately 33%, very close to the expected result. Environmental conditions, such as room temperature, plays a significant role in the fridge's efficiency. In environments warmer than 68 degrees Fahrenheit, or as appliances age, the duty cycle is likely to increase due to the fridge needing to work harder to maintain its internal temperature. If you found this video helpful so far, a like on the video would be greatly appreciated. Let's discuss a question many of you might have. What size solar system do I need to run this fridge? Will a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery be enough? With a fridge consuming 600 watt hours daily, I will outline the essentials for a solar setup that ensures the fridge keeps running. First, we're looking at a 12 volt battery system, designed for 3 days of autonomy. This is to ensure your fridge stays on even during cloudy days. I have calculated about 4 hours of sunlight. Don't forget to add the consumption of the inverter, which uses 15 watts by just being on 24-7. I will use the off-grid solar calculator on my website to calculate this. The link will be in the description for those interested in using it. After we filled in all the information, 
we need a 12 volt 300 amp hour lithium battery and 800 watts of solar panels. It might seem like a big setup just for a fridge, but it's important to keep things running even if there's no sun for several days. It's important to note that the sun hours are based on a worst case scenario. In this example, a winter in Florida, as shown in this sun hours table. Depending on where you live, especially if it's further from the equator, you might need to adjust your solar panels and battery capacity accordingly. For those looking to dive deeper into sizing your solar system, I've linked a detailed video in the description below. Let's pivot to a crucial piece of the puzzle, selecting an inverter that matches your fridge needs. It's not just about the regular running power. We've got to consider the initial power surge that happens every time when the fridge compressor kicks in. This surge can momentarily require up to 6 times the fridge rated power. A fridge with a rated power of 75 watts, you're looking at a surge requirement of up to 450 watts. Because of this, I've opted for a 600 watt inverter for my setup. It comfortably handles the surge and ensures everything runs smoothly without tripping or overloading the inverter. Let's review some key strategies to reduce the energy your fridge uses and help it last longer. These steps are simple, yet effective in ensuring your fridge operates efficiently, which is especially important for those relying on solar power. Avoid hot items. Placing hot items directly into the fridge makes it harder to cool down. Let food cool down to room temperature first. Keep your fridge in a cool, well-ventilated spot. Heat sources like stoves or direct sunlight can make it consume more power. Ensure the grill at the back is dust free. A full fridge maintains its cool temperature better than an empty one. The less airspace, the less work for the compressor. So even if you're not stocking up, consider filling the space with water bottles. Defrost often. Don't let ice build up in the freezer. Manual defrosting helps the fridge run more efficiently by reducing the compressor's workload. Let me know your questions in the comments. Subscribe for more videos like this and watch these videos next.